Well, I, uh, hi, my name is Christopher Glissang, and so I'm a physicist in, in my background, but most of the time I worked as an astronaut for the European Space Agency. I flew twice to the International Space Station with the Space Shuttle Discovery. Nowadays, I'm working at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology as a, uh, well, in space travel, <laughs> let's say, professor there. Thank you very much. Um, to begin with, from the very start, how were you as a child? Special interests? Uh, traits, yeah, I, I was already then and still am interested in a lot of things. Uh, but certainly, you know, I, I always found it fun to work on problems, more uh, theoretical problems, and then was early on interested in, in math. My dad, who was not really uh, I'm an engineer or scientist or anything like that, but he, he can also look math, uh, like math and stimulated me a bit. And he liked chess, yeah. right? And he taught me to play chess when mm -hmm. I was <laughs> six years old. <laughs> and and uh, I always loved to play chess also. So uh, I'm curious about your school years. What did you think about school and learning when you were? No, I, I, I genuinely uh, enjoyed it to go to school and learn things. and. Uh, Sure, there were some occasions when I was not too happy to have to do the homework. Those days, you got it earlier on than today. Uh, and I do remember one point when my mom told me, you do your homework before you're allowed to go out on, on the street and play with the other kids. And I was not happy at that time. A but sad generally, day for you. I liked it. Yeah. <laughs> and I heard that you weren't aiming for being in, becoming an astronaut very early on, but uh, were you aiming for becoming for something else? Really? Well, I um, at, towards the end of high school, before uh, gymnasium in Sweden, before uh, kind of, I, I, I knew I was going to study further in un at university, but I didn't really know what to do. I, I had some idea to uh, study uh, law, uh, but I really enjoyed math, so I said, okay, I will definitely combine it in math. And at some point, I met you know one student from the university studying. Uh, mm -hmm. Unique uh, law, and uh, I told him my plans, and I said, "Well, you know, uh, might be too much that with the math as well." And then I started to reconsider. I mean, okay, let's go for the math instead. And <laughs> <laughs> okay. I, I found a, a program at the KTH Royal Institute of Technology, uh, Engineering Physics, mm. uh, which ah, okay. that's where it was. And but no idea, okay. uh, no intention that okay, I'm going to become an astronaut. That came much later. No, uh, that's interesting to hear more to the magical side of uh, science and mathematics in particular. Um, what do you think is truly magical about maths? The good thing with maths compared to almost another thing is that there is an absolute right and wrong. <laughs> Even in physics, uh, at least uh, when it's in experimental physics, you measure things, but you're not really sure well, what, what are the maybe systematics errors you can it's easy to define with statistical errors. You just measure more and more, care, uh, more and more times, and you get better, better answer. But you may have missed something in how you did the measurement. Right? Mm. Mass, you know, you can get it right mm. or you can get it wrong. Yeah. It's not everything. It's possible to prove. And actually, that's been proven that it's, you cannot prove everything. But uh, mm. it's kind of clean uh, from, from that way. No, that binary in some way that you can actually... Binary uh, to some uh, extent, extent, of course. Yes, yeah. yes, yes. So the magic realized that you, you can actually be very precise, accurate in mathematics compared to them. Yeah, mathematics is the most accurate science. Yeah. yeah. And do you think uh, imagination plays a role when doing using math? Yes, it, it, it does. I mean... Uh, and how? Well... Some of you have learned the rules, uh, you know, this kind of problem, I use this, these kind of rules uh, from mathematics. I mean, if there's trigon trigonometry, you need the distance. Well, I know that this and that one. Oh, that's hypo uh, Pythagoras uh, rule, for example. But sometimes you need to put together uh, several rules or even kind of extend the rules you know and then, mm. then you need the imagination to kind of uh, figure out oh, how can you do that. I mean, to apply it to I, new settings. Yeah, I mean, I, I think all the problem solving is a part of uh, imagination. I mean, mm. Think about the box, as one says. Mm. 
Yeah. Now that is the most exciting part of it. It's not fun to solve the problem and you know, okay, I just take this uh, kind yeah. of uh, so regular rule exercise. or this formula, plug in numbers. No, no, the fun thing is that when you don't know what mm. to use and you need to use the imagination to find the mm. solution. So, your feelings about maths, when you engage in maths, what usually, what kind of feelings do you think is evoked in your you? Well, I, I get positive feeling. Uh, mm -hmm. To me, I, I get kind of yeah, happy. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and it's very sad that uh, quite a few uh, school children, they, they, they um, instead they are kind of they're, they're scared for it. They get a fear. Yeah. And I don't really know how that come and I know that's kind of what you're working on to, to, yes, to so yeah. I, I guess if you can e more easily understand something yeah then it's fun but if it's mm -hmm. not easy to understand yeah you don't like it uh, but uh, since math is so fundamental and very important to people everyone knows it and understands to some extent it's very important that you can make sure everyone yeah. no one should be uh, They're not afraid have to of kind it. Kind of find a way that everyone can learn without being becoming afraid of it. So I was, um, I'm curious about how do you think we can inspire future generations to use mathematics and to feel excited about learning math? Well, one thing is to sh kind of talk about the things you know kids are excited about and one typically is space yeah. <laughs> space and di <laughs> dinosaurs right well, <laughs> but then also uh, then tie it into mathematics and, and, and kind of show how uh, all the uh, actual science and knowledge is based on mathematics so try to get them uh, curious uh, or um, try to put mass in a way which kind of makes it fun. Uh, have maybe kind of like games which are, you can have it on any level. So it means that everyone can mm. do it without it feels too hard, but uh, then it's a bit mass in it. So they you know, mm. learn by playing, as they say. Mm. So I, I think that's are some ways. Um, at the same time, um, I think Children should also understand, well, going to school is not only fun, it is a kind of your work and uh, you have to be prepared that it will be hard sometimes, mm. but you have to do it. Thank you very much. This was, uh, it was super fun. I really enjoyed it and very intriguing for me. I got even well, uh, quite as many. Thank you. I, I enjoyed it also and, and very best luck in kind of improving the math. Thank you. Teaching in Sweden and in the world. Yeah, we need that. Thank we you. We need it. Thank you. <laughs>